Let's talk about how to get the most out of your voice sampler. You're a voice actor. You're an entrepreneur. You're a VOpreneur. Welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur Podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. Having your voiceover demos easily playable and downloadable on your website is essential. The Voice Sam Player lets you do that across any device and browser. There are also options for adding play buttons in your email signature, tracking your listens, and even putting videos in your demo player. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash markscott and receive an instant $25 credit. For full details and to claim this offer, visit voicesam.com slash markscott. The VOpreneur Podcast. Hey, it doesn't suck. Not as funny as Conan. Not as cute as Seth Meyers. Not as smart as Colbert. But he's one of us, and that counts for something. Here's Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur. Hello, and welcome to the Everyday VOpreneur podcast, your guide through the business of voiceover. I'm Mark Scott, the original Everyday VOpreneur, and you know what's about to go down. More actionable, practical advice that you can use to grow your voiceover business. And I'm really excited about this particular episode. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast for a while, you've heard me talk about VoiceSAM. There are spots that run within this podcast for VoiceSAM. I want to be very clear. This episode is not designed to be a sales pitch for VoiceSAM. This episode is designed to help you get the most out of it if you are using the player or if you're not using the player to give you some ideas of how it might be to your advantage. And so I have reached out to Bob Merkel, who is the man behind VoiceSAM, and asked him some really pointy questions about how we can do some different things with this player, how we can use it to enhance our marketing efforts, and how we can make sure that we are getting the most out of the player. Bob has a lot of great tips to offer, definitely some things that I didn't even know about, and so some tweaks that I'm going to be making even in how I use the voice sampler. So if you are using it, or if you've been thinking about using it, I think this is going to be a really educational and enlightening episode for you. When it comes to marketing your voiceover business, there's one tool in your toolbox that is more important than any other, and that's your demos. If people can't hear what you sound like and get a sense of what you're capable of doing in the booth, they're much less likely to pay you money to talk. So having professional demos, essential. Having them on a website in a player that works, regardless of the device or the browser that is being used, I think is equally important. My guest today is the creator of a player that has become what many would consider to be the industry standard. Welcome, Bob Merkel of VoiceAm. Thank you, Mr. Mark Scott. How are you doing? That was a great introduction. Looking forward to having this conversation with you today. So look, I'm going to start with with the hard question first. I always like to get the hard question out of the way first. So let's go there. (laughs) Okay, I'll go there. You found yourself in the midst of a a, a little bit of community frustration recently when you announced a price increase for Voice Sam. So just talk to us about, you know, the rates went up. Why did they go up? And and why did it seem like, to some anyway, that it was a a pretty steep increase? Hmm. Good question. It was a steep in- increase. And the reason for that uh, is pretty simple. So we launched in 2003. And since that time, we have never raised our prices. And we do have add-ons and that sort of thing. So we've added on add-ons. But the base system itself uh, has been evolving with new additions and features and things like that. But the prices haven't uh, really matched what value is there. So, you know, rather than just kind of put it out there as little small increases, I decided to rip the bandaid off and just put it where I thought the pricing should be. And I don't think that that's completely out of the question. I mean, look, as voice actors, we raise our rates all the time, or at least we try to, or we say that we're trying to raise our rates all the time. I think we know that business inflation you know, it happens. The cost of doing business goes up. Expenses go up. Things get more expensive. You know, a gallon of milk doesn't cost now what it cost five years ago or whatever. So so I understand that. There was definitely a little bit of pushback, though. But, I mean, what are you going to do? I, I guess it's one of those things where if you don't see the value in the service, then you let it go. And I'm not really sure why you got to cry about it all over social media. But I guess that's the world that we live in today. And I, I know that. It was a shock for many people. Um, and really... The reason behind all this is that's on me. You know, I should have been uh, looking at my prices, making sure they're fair to both parties. Yep. 
and raising them accordingly. So is that something that is going to be built into the model going forward rather than just evaluating the prices every so many years? Are you going to evaluate on a more consistent basis so that if there does have to be an increase built in, it it doesn't seem like such a big hit all at once? Well, I I guess uh, the audience should decide that. No, I'm not sure that I'd like to, but here's the problem. My, my, personality type, my, the characteristics of who I am, I'm like, oh, I don't want to get to that right now. It's like I'm, I'm making people happy. We're putting great products and services out there. Let's just focus on that and we'll come back to pricing later. And, you know, it's money doesn't hurt, but I'm not necessarily money driven. Right. I'm service driven. And I hope uh, those who know me know that I try and do um, great customer service for them. Yes. And that, that has a lot of value to it. I didn't mention that in my, I wrote a letter, kind of an open letter out to the community, and I didn't mention that. And that is, it's, try, it's hard to find good customer service nowadays. Yes, personal it is. Custom, personal customer service. And my business model, it's kind of upside, my org chart's up, upside down. I, I handle all the customer service. And there's a reason for that because I get a lot of feedback mm-hmm. from my clients about how the product's doing, what what problems they're facing that I can solve. And then it's easy for me to translate to the developers or the designers, hey folks, we need this. This is gonna be helpful uh, for them. So the customer service is not gonna change. The products will get better. The pricing will help me launch new things um, which are coming. And so, yeah, the services and the products are just going to get better. And I will personally attest to the to the service, and that is one of the things that I tell people all the time. I get asked questions about, you know, how do I do this in Voice Sam, or how do I make that work? Because obviously, I'm an affiliate. We mentioned it in the podcast, so people come to me because they sign up through my link, and I'm like, hey, if you reach out to Bob, I know he's going to get back to you. I know he's going to have a solution for you. Uh, and so I will absolutely attest to the quality of the of the customer service. So let's talk about the player itself then, because yeah. There are a lot of different options for voice actors to put players and demos and all of that sort of stuff on their website. So what makes Voice Sam unique and why should someone consider it over a lot of the other different options that are out there, including all of the different free options that are out there? Mm. Now you're asking questions to, to the heart and soul of, of who I am and what I believe about the product. How about a little history lesson here? I'll, I'll go through it quick, right? Okay. So I worked, um, the reason I got into this whole thing, my background was first was uh, theater and communications, then I went into uh, software engineering, and then I took a right-hand turn uh, into advertising and became a, a commercial producer. And so I was a person grinding through demos at that time, and uh, it, was, uh, it was an interesting time. So to talk about the demo, I think this is really important for people to understand, it has a fundamental flaw in it, and I'm gonna explain why. It's changing, well, we're changing it, <laughs> but it, uh, I, I, I think people will get this. So it all started back in magnetic tape called reel to reel, and that's why they call it a reel. So you have one reel on one side, one reel on another, the magnetic tape goes across a, uh, a, a reader head, and that's how you got audio, and so, Rather than handing somebody an album or a 45, you would give them a reel. And the reel would be one of the genres. So you'd have a commercial reel. They'd put it on their tape deck. They'd play it. They'd listen to it. The important point here is it's linear, right? Then things moved to cassettes. And I got into this industry right around the transition from reels to cassettes. So I was actually listening to reels back then. It's been a while. And then cassettes came. Same thing. Important point. You hand a cassette, it usually had a single genre on it, and it was linear. And here's what I mean by linear. That commercial demo, let's say, on the cassette, you would start, you know, you rewind it to the front, hit play, and there you hear the first track or the first spot or the first 30 seconds of whatever they want to deliver. And then you wait, and then it goes to the next track, and you hear that, okay? So then the next thing was, well, they skipped eight track tapes for uh, good reasons. Uh, It was never really a great um, audio playback platform, but it was semi-linear. This is interesting. 8-track tapes actually introduced the concept of tracks. And so it was four tracks in stereo. That gives you eight. And you hit the button, and it goes to one and two, and then it goes to three and four, and then it goes. 
So that, forget 8-track tapes. It was a short-lived thing that, yep. that uh, went obsolete. Then we went to digital. This was an interesting time. CDs came out. And unfortunately, our industry missed an opportunity. So what CDs introduced is the concept of uh, tracks, music tracks, right? Mm -hmm. So you put the CD in, you can select the track you want. That was great. So the VO industry moved to CDs. What they made a mistake on is they put each genre as a track on the CD, meaning each genre was like commercial, but then you had to listen through all the commercial spots on that track. What they should have done, looking back, of course, is, is just like the music industry, had multiple genres on the CD and given them uh, tracks for each spot. And then when you move online, same thing. But interesting enough, enough, the music industry went one way, like iTunes, Spotify, and gave you this concept of tracks in a player. VO industry kind of stayed with the traditional, where you had one player or one single linear file, an MP3, you would play it, and guess what? Multiple tracks. So that's, that's the history. So somewhere along the line, somebody had to come up with this idea of, hey, why don't we do it like the music industry and make it easier? And here's the critical thing that, that was introduced with Voice Sam. We moved the responsibility of what to listen for or to in a demo. We moved that from the talent to the listener. Okay. So when you, in, in the past, when you sat down to think about what I, want, what I want in my demo, you structured it a certain way, you decided what tracks would be first, what would be last, you know, how many you would put on, how long they'd be. You've made a decision for the listener. You said, this is what I think you'll want to listen to, or this is what I think you should listen to. What Voice Am introduces is this whole concept of, no, put it all out there and let the listener decide. Just like music industry, sometimes you just want to hit a track in the you know, middle of the album or whatever, or you mm -hmm. want to hear part of it. And so that's what Voice Sam does. And, uh, you know, just in prep, I was listening to an interview you uh, did with our dear J. Michael, and uh, it was great. I mean, it's fun to listen to. Uh, he made a comment, though, which I'm, I'm going to... Uh, uh, not take issue with, but just raise a, a question about. So he said, the, you were talking about the future of the industry, and he'll said, he said, uh, demos will probably not go more than 90 seconds. They might go 90, never go to two, two minutes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to challenge that. Let's say you have a 10-minute demo. Let's say 10-minute commercial demo, all right? And on that 10-minute commercial demo, you have 20. Oh, let's break it down. Five-minute commercial demo. That might be more realistic. And in that five-minute demo, you have 10 30-second spots. Make, does the math work? Yes. Okay. So you put that out there, and people would say you're crazy. They'll never listen that long, and I would absolutely agree. And here's the magic. The listener goes to the first spot. It's a 30-second spot. If they like it, they can hear all the nuances of your voicings, you, how you hit the brand, how you come to the end, how you close it, et cetera, et cetera. If they don't like it, they skip. And skipping is your friend. People say, no, no, we don't want them to skip. And I say, yes, yes, you absolutely want them to skip. Because here's what they're doing. They're engaging with your demo. They're engaging with you. And some of these producers are ADD crazy. We can see it in our analytics. They're here, they're here, they're A being this, they're going back to this. They're jumping all over the place. And what you're doing is you're drawing them into who you are as a voicing expert, and they're finding all the things they want to hear, and then they can narrow that down and download whatever they want and take it to, the, to their boardroom. So skipping's your friend. Even though you presented them with a five-minute demo, they're breaking it down the way they want. They have the control. They have the, um, the ability to go where they want to do that. And again, I'll see this in... Um, our analytics, they'll spend three, four, five minutes reviewing demos, just one genre, because they're trying to find, there's a voice, I'm, as a former producer, there's a voice in your head, you're trying to match something to that yeah. voice, you have that concept, and this, is, this gives them that ability, that freedom. And by the way, if you ever want to see a great use of what I'm talking about, there's a talent out there named Debbie Groton, and it's D-E-B-B-I-E-G-R-A-T-T-A-N.com. Have a look at her website and see what she's done with the player, and you'll get a, a real idea of um, what I'm talking about. It's been very successful for her.
the idea that skipping is your friend makes sense to me. Like I can say hands down without question and and I don't have any kind of analytics other than just my inbox, but the spot that gets referenced on my commercial demo more than any other spot when clients reach out to me from my demo is the fourth spot on my demo. Mm -hmm. That's the one that I get all the time. Can you do it like this? Can you do it like this? Can you do it like this? And so knowing that they have the ability to skip through, right? Because they're not hearing what they want. Otherwise, they're having to listen to the first three spots to get to the fourth spot if you're using a traditional demo player, right? Exactly. Do yep. they get, if they how many of them it. even make it to the fourth spot if they have to sift through the whole thing? And and so that makes sense. And the music industry analogy is brilliant too because, I mean, I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've bought a track off an album mm-hmm. but not bought an album. Exactly. All right. Well, that, that makes sense to me. And, and I, I see why there's an advantage to that for sure especially if you're on the production side, right? So not thinking like a voice actor because we sometimes we we get a little too attached and personal to our demos and we're like presenting it like a piece of art that should be consumed, you know, as presented. But on the production side, if you've got to listen to 100 different voices to find the one that you want, you don't got time to go through all 90 seconds of every single one of those demos, right? The ability to skip is, I would think, would be a lifesaver in that regard. It is a lifesaver. And from a producer's point of view, the average time they'll listen is 20 seconds. That's usually it. And, you, and you're already at a disadvantage because what if you chose the wrong track and they have a problem with it? You know, maybe they didn't like the brand or maybe the, maybe the delivery is just not what they're looking for. But, you know, number four, like you say, is the delivery that w- that's gold. They, they would take that in a heartbeat. Well, they know on VoiceAm it's set up just like a music player that the next thing it can do is skip. And so it's, it's so conventional of how you listen to audio right now. It fits like a glove for their workflow. And that's what, what I've tried to do with it. Okay, so then the next question becomes, and this is one that I've seen a lot of debate on, so I'm very curious to hear your perspective. We have our demos broken down into individual clips now, and we, we upload those individual clips. What is the best way to name those clips? And I'm guessing that there are Back-end <laughs> SEO considerations, there's forward-facing marketing considerations, but, but as the guy that created the thing, <laughs> what, what are you saying? Are we labeling it by brand? Are we labeling it by the type of read? What, what's the best way to do it in, in your experience? These are great questions. Thank you. So some people aren't going to like my answer, but I'm, I'm, I'm giving this answer from a purely, I guess, uh, engineering point of view and psychology point of view. So we'll see if we can mix those together, Okay. Titles are problematic. And so here's what you don't want. Well, first of all, what you'd love to happen, and again, you can see this in the analytics, is what I call cruise control. Somebody comes to your demo, they click on the first track, maybe don't like it, click on the second one. So you, you see them engaging, right? What you don't want them to do, you want to, you, that's the process that I'm going for, that I'm trying to get people to, uh, my clients to have their clients do that cruise control. What you don't want to happen is you, you don't want a visual signal to take them out of cruise control. So they hit the first track and they look down and says, Hey, target. Hey, I'm kind of doing a target. So they jump down to that and it's not the, the delivery. They may have missed two, three, four, five different tracks that may have been closer, or they have a visual uh, cue that turns them off. Maybe there's a brand that they just don't like, or it's just titled the wrong way. So here's the solution. You're probably wondering, well, what's the solution then? Well, here's the solution. They're generic. They're nondescript titles. So, um, Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot. What's, do you know right off the bat some of your copy from one of your, one of your tracks? I could tell you that, I mean, I know that on my commercial demo, for example, I, right now, mine are labeled by brand, right? So okay. I have Apple TV, Pocono Raceway, Dave & Buster's, DeWalt, Delta Airlines, uh, PTSD, PSA, and a Tesla spot. And, and I've just labeled them. In that, on my commercial demo, I've labeled them based on brand. On my e-learning demo, I actually have some of them labeled like casual conversational, corporate authoritative formal instructional, uh, casual instructional. Like, so I've, I've, I've played around with different, uh, with, with some of the different options. I don't, I don't know if one is better than the other. And that's why I was very curious to hear what you, what your thoughts were. 
Okay. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I've brought your site up. I'm going to play one of your spots. Ready? Yep. The Tesla Model S sedan, now available with optional ludicrous mode. The ultimate My guys. family car. So the reason I, I chose Tesla, I love Tesla. I drive a Tesla. <laughs> and so the title could just be, it could just be the ultimate. And so here's what I'm going for. I'm going for a nondescript phrase that tells you nothing about the voice and doesn't infer anything. You know what it is? It's a placeholder. Okay. And that's what, that's what people don't understand. But you got to think uh, about this from the producer or the buyer's um, standpoint. You don't want that to give any inference, any indication of what the voice is going to be. But you want it to be interesting, you know, kind of a placeholder phrase that might have some interest. And so does the SEO work into this? Maybe. But I think it's more important when you have a, a person there, uh, a hot lead, to just keep them in cruise control. And here's the cool thing. So if you have Zamtistix, our analytics, you can change it up. Give it different titles. Give it a month and see what the analytics tell you. Are they jumping around? Are they going forward? Are they jumping to a, to a specific spot? Um, for a specific title. And so, it, you know, it's kind of open. This all plays on the fact that they can go where they want to go. You know, you haven't pre-thought out where you think they should go. And so you can actually watch their analytics and then modify the arrangement based on uh, what you see. This is interesting because I guess <laughs> there there is a, a belief that if you label it like Based on the type of read, this is my, you know, friendly guy next door read or whatever. Mm -hmm. there, there was, there's an assumption that there's a level of, of SEO value there. And there's, you know, you're telling people, so say somebody comes to your website because they're looking for the friendly guy next door read, they can Im immediately click friendly guy next door read. And right. so logically, when you're thinking about it, and again, you're thinking from a voice actor perspective, that all makes sense, right? It all jives together. But what you're saying is keep it a little bit a little bit more generic, make it interesting, almost like an email subject line, right? Something that's kind of interesting, but exactly. doesn't really give anything away. Exactly. Okay. And so here's, here's how I, the, your argument is, is sound to a degree. This is a voiceover industry and people should be selecting with their ears, not their eyes. Right. And that's all I'm saying. If the eyes are getting in the way, you're disrupting the real process and workflow that needs to happen. That is they're selecting you because of your delivery, not by what they're reading. Right. And, you know, you can argue it both ways, but you ask for my opinion, then there you go. We're talking about the voice sampler this week and using that as a tool to get people to listen to your demos. Now, obviously, your demos are your number one marketing tool. I believe that if you can get people to listen to your demos and you've got great demos, your demos are going to do the selling for you. And that's an important distinction because nobody wants to do sales, but we can all do some marketing. We can all drive traffic. We can all get ears on our demos, whether we are doing that through social media or doing that through email marketing. There are a lot of different ways that we can get people to listen to our demos. If the marketing side of this, if figuring out how to find people, how to get them to listen to your demos, if that is what you struggle with, that is what I can help you with. I'd encourage you to go to markscottcoaching.com. You can check out a lot of different resources that I offer, including video classes and private one-on-one -on -one coaching, all related to the business and marketing side of voiceover. You can even book a 15-minute consult with me. These are free 15-minute chats. We'll talk specifically about what your struggles are, and we can determine whether or not I can help you. And if I can't, can I point you to someone who can get you the answers that you need? All of this is available at markscottcoaching.com. That's M A R C. S-C-O-T-T, -T, coaching.com, markscottcoaching.com. Now, back to our show. You've talked a couple of times now. You've mentioned Zamtistics, so let's go through this a little bit because I know for me, I'm one of those guys that could get totally OCD. I could get lost mm -hmm. in the weeds of statistics, which is why I don't really pay attention to Google Analytics on my website or, or anything like that because I know that I could get so caught up in the data that it would become an obsession. And, sure. and not necessarily do anything productive for me. So without obsessing over demo listens, which I know is one of the stats that we can see, are there better ways to read the data or are there ways that we can use the data we're presented to help determine the effectiveness of our marketing? So I guess what, what are some ways that you would suggest taking a feature like Zamtistics 
and doing something productive with it for, from a voiceover marketing standpoint. Okay, so Zamtistics can be as deep as you want or as shallow as you want. But here's one thing that I think it really offers talent a benefit, and that is an emotional feel, an emotional knowledge that you're being heard and how you're being heard. And so in many ways, the VO industry is kind of a numbers game. If you don't get yourself out there and if you're not sending out your demo and if you're not uh, uh, marketing yourself, as you would say out there, nothing's going to happen. But if you do, you know, if you, if you get your player out there and people are listening to you, something's going to happen. And the way you can gauge that is by your Zamtistics. You, you don't even have to look at the data. How many playbacks did I get today? or last week or whatever. And on our Zamtistics, we have a graph and the graph shows, I think 30 days worth of uh, data. And it'll show you on a line graph per day, how many times you got playback, how many, how many playbacks. Well, that's, that's just great feedback for you to encourage you to keep going on the numbers game. Who haven't I contacted recently? Who needs to hear my demo? What genre in the industry am I trying to attack? And, um, you know, are they getting playback? So that's the first level. It just gives you some, some great feedback. Mm -hmm. The second one is what I call velocity. How are people doing on individual genres and on the player itself? Are they listening a long time? Is there something there that's not set up right so that they don't feel like they can hear everything or, you know, um, are they just jumping through this, uh, the first read just, and you'll see it down to two seconds. Are they just passing by two seconds or are they, are they listening to it? It gives you some feedback about um, how people are behavior and they do heat maps and stuff like that. That's what I'm talking about. What are people, how are, how are people behaving on this? The other thing, if you send out a demo, uh, you can send it out with a tracking code and the tracking code will give you not the identity. We don't give you the identity, but it'll, it'll give you what's been played for how long for a specific individual that you know that you sent the demo to. So let's say you sent your, I called you up and say, Hey, Mark, can you give me three in a row with a, you know, upbeat kind of fun, uh, delivery on this script? And you're like, well, I'll give it a try. So you do that you send it to me and, or you say, I have a demo for that, or I have a, a track for that. You send that to me and I play it back, but you send it with a tracking code, Bob one, two, three in Zamtistics, you'll see all my activity under Bob one, two, three. So we give you that cool feedback. Okay. There's a few other things if you, if you want. I mean, you can, you can break it down. We give you a big map. You can see where in the world is Mark Scott, you know, has, has he been heard, that sort of thing. And if you go on our pricing page, it breaks some of this down a little more in detail. It's good to know. I mean, I totally get the psychological side of it, right? You're, you're sending all these emails or you're doing all this stuff on social media, whatever it is that you're doing to try to drive people to listen to your demo. Yeah. I could see the advantage of, oh, at least I know they're listening, right? And, and so you're, exactly. you're getting one step closer, which makes a lot of sense to me. Now, we, we talked about SEO a little bit when we were talking about labeling files. I still remember, where, I think it was a, a World Voices conference in Las Vegas when you were showing me some new SEO stuff that you were working on. This is going back a few years now, but VoiceM really does have some pretty impressive SEO capability. And I mean, we've seen it through doing Google searches and people's websites and their VoiceM players coming up. Talk to us a little bit about the SEO potential that exists in the player, because I mean, SEO is like, that is a buzzword now. Everybody wants to try to figure out how to get more SEO and, and voice Sam does give us the ability to do that to a degree. So talk, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of things going on. A lot of it comes down to the talent and I can give you the kind of the, the step stepwise things to do if you're using the voice Sam player. Um, what you want to do is put the player on, say the homepage, right up front, um, put it above the scroll as I call it and have it available. And then you want to create a, uh, genre page, uh, on your site, a page, a website page for each demo. And why is that important? Well, you can talk about that, uh, genre on each page and give it some SEO, what I call Google juice, right? The, the indexers pick that up and they yep. love it. And if you, if you speak it in your own voice as you're writing even better, they love that. But now the player, then the genre in the player is tied to that page. 
all right? And so when somebody says, I'm looking for uh, medical narration, um, if, that, if your page is filled with medical narration type of stuff, it's, you're gonna be, your ranking is gonna go high, okay? The other thing you wanna do is, if you don't have one, set up a YouTube page and put your demos on that and use a lot of the same uh, copy in the description of your demo. And it's even okay to, to put, you know, maybe a picture of something, uh, maybe change it up if you have a video editor. Um, it's pretty easy to do nowadays, but put, put your demo up there. The, YouTube will immediately do closed captioning for you. And so that gets indexed. And now because you're using the voice sample player and you're pointing to it from your website, now you get some triangulation mm -hmm. and that gives you some authority. I'm proud to say voice Sam has authority in our little industry here with Google and, and YouTube. And we built that up because of all our clients who are using it, but also uh, all these clients who are getting hits from when people are searching for uh, voiceover talent. And so what we try to do, it's, it's always a moving target uh, with Google and the way they do things, and that's cool. I mean, that's kind of fun. Um, but we always try to, to do a little check and see where we are in the rankings and uh, make modifications uh, to that as well. The one thing I, I, meant, I didn't mention, so if let's say you have uh, four demos in your player, you want four website pages all dedicated to each demo, right? Yep. And you can launch the player with that demo. People will know this, but you can. But you also want a link on the home page that leads to the the second demo, and then a, a link on that page that leads to the third, and then a, a link that leads to the fourth, and then back to the home page. So you have a linking set of indexes that Google can crawl and find all your pages. Everything comes together. That's the the mapping or whatever they call it, right? With the yeah, site mapping. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, if if I've just confused you like crazy, go to Voice Sam, go under the Help menu item, and there's a there's kind of an SEO guide guide on how to set up your website um, to do that. And there's a lot more, but I won't go into it. Here's a question that I actually got asked yesterday, and I referred them to you to to answer the question. But I think it's a it's a valid one, and it has to do with the idea of I guess skinning the player. Is that uh, is that the right terminology? But it is possible to do some customizations to the player to make it fit with your branding or the overall vibe of the site. Now when it comes to doing that, is that something that the talent can do on their own? Is it something they need you to do or they've got to get a third party to do for them? Like, is their code involved? How easy or simple is it to do some of the customization? Uh, it's pretty simple. So you can go in and you can, we have several, I don't know, we have like 18 different themes that you can choose from. Okay. So you choose a theme, and then if you don't like some of the, like, uh, I don't know, the background you want to change or the title text um, you want to change or the font, colors, that sort of thing, it's very, very customizable. And then if that's not enough and you're skilled enough or you have a web designer who is skilled enough, the whole player is based on CSS. And so it's styled from underneath, and you can get into, you can actually add a custom CSS file that can play with any of the uh, player's elements and change it that way. And uh, the, actually there's a great example of this. There's a guy named uh, Kurt Bonham. It's a C-U-R-T-B-O-N-N-E-M, Kurt Bonham, V-O.com, Kurt Bonham, V-O. Look what he's done. I mean, this guy, he, he's a web guy, so he knows what he's doing. And uh, he, he modified the player completely so you don't even see the player it's just built into his website it's pretty cool well uh, i'll put links to a couple of these websites that you've mentioned we'll i'll get those from you and we'll put them in the show notes so people can check those out because i think it is fun to see what other people are doing with the player i think that it, it, there is a there's a lot of potential there that maybe people are missing so we've talked about some of the different premium add-ons that voice sam has and there's a lot of different things this this player can do a lot more than just be a player yeah but for the voice actor who maybe is just using the basic player, maybe they, you know, they're, they're starting out in their business. They're not ready to subscribe to everything yet. You've talked about a few things, but are there things that we can do regardless of whether we have premium options, all that sort of stuff, but are there things that we can do to improve the results that we're seeing with voice Sam stuff that we could apply today, for example? 
one of the things that comes with the vase player, uh, it's free, is, are, is a Zam link. And what is a Zam link? Well, a Zam link is a way that you can select a demo and send it out to an email. You can post it on social media, um, send it um, directly to producers. You can add a tracking code. Well, that has to do with Zam Statistics, so I won't talk about that. So let's say the scenario is, hey, Mark, same guy. I'm Bob Merkel, and I need uh, your toughest rough guy, Reed. Do you have anything like that? And you say, yeah, give me a second. I'll send you it. So uh, we're going to go to your uh, whatever demo has that in it. And you bring up the Zam link, and you put a tracking code. Well, I won't talk about tracking code, sorry. Uh, and you, you immediately send that in an email. I, Bob, get it. It leads with that demo, and then I can quickly uh, click through what the reads are. And the other thing is, this is the great thing about the, the bass player, is it cross sells. So let's, let's say I listen to that track and I'm like, wow, this guy's pretty impressive. Oh, he does uh, um, medical or he does uh, commercial. Um, and so within the player, I can go over and listen to your other demos as well. And then thirdly, I can download it. I can download that individual track or I can download the entire demo. And that's one of the things I didn't mention about uh, the player. So this is really cool. Even though you have multiple tracks within, or I'm going to call them spots because tracks can be confusing, multiple spots within a demo. Like I noticed on your Mark Scott uh, commercial demo, it's Apple TV, Pocono, Dave, and Buzz, you got a bunch of them, right? Yep. There's one button on that player that they can click, and magically we concatenate, and it's a system turner, we join all those reads together into a seamless playback fashion, a single MP3 which is like the traditional. So if, if your listener is kind of ADD read based, they just want to jump around and listen to all these things they can and download separate tracks. But if they just want to take their whole, your whole demo with them, they hit, they click that one button and it comes down as a completely titled, uh, commercial demo. And then all the tracks are fused together. And then the other thing that's cool is when they download it, if you have your logo uploaded onto voice Sam, Every one of those tracks, every one of the demos, everything downloaded always has your image, your your um, uh, your logo baked into that MP3. So when they play it on a Mac or PC, they will see your logo playing. It's pretty cool. And that's something that I need to do. And I know that I got an email about that a week or two ago saying, hey, you need to add your logo to your voice sampler. Now you've just reminded me. So I will I will add that to my list. I will say downloading is so key. And it's something that I think a lot of voice actors don't think about. I don't do a lot of casting, but every once in a while I do have clients that ask me for assistance in finding a voice that, you know, I'm not the right fit for. And I can tell you that there have been times where talent have lost out on the casting opportunity from me because I went to their website and I could not download their demo. So, you know, it's Friday night, it's 10 o'clock, I don't have time to email people asking them to send me demos or whatever. So I jump on a bunch of voice actors' websites and I just want to be able to download and collect demos for my client. And for everybody that has the voice sampler, they can always rest easy knowing that no matter what, that is something that can be done. I can download them. But other players that don't offer that functionality, you, you may be missing out on opportunities. So I'm glad that you mentioned the, the download thing because that is absolutely key. One important thing to remember is your buyers are probably working for their clients. And so they are going to want to take that and play it for somebody. Well, they can take your website, bring it up on a laptop or a phone and fumble around. It, they don't want to do that. Yep. It's just a bad, bad uh, way of presenting. I know that you are always working on voice, Sam. I know you're always looking to add new features and do things to improve it, add more value. Uh, I think we've all seen evidence of that. Anybody that's been using the player for any length of time. Can you give us any sneak previews of, of stuff that is maybe in the works or some things that might be coming in 2022 to Voice Sam? Hmm. I certainly can. Well, I, I'll talk about something we came up with recently, and that's called our Zam site. Actually, it's your Zam site. It, it is an add-on, but here's the, here's the idea behind it. It's a one-page portfolio of your entire work. And uh, if you go on our website, you can under pricing, you can see how it looks, what it looks like. Um, and it's a great place to send your clients. It's like a Zam link on steroids. And so they can go there. They see all your work, including video, because there's a video grid on there as well. So VoiceHam is in integrated into it. 
And so that's, it's been very, very popular in getting uh, clients to all your work without hafting, having them uh, sift through a website. And I'll just make one comment about here. Putting up a website is great. I think it's one of the most important things a talent should do. But the problem is, is that from a producer, again, I always face this from a, from a buyer side, producers hate websites <laughs> because they're all different. You know, and they go there like, okay, well, where's the demos? Oh, well, you know, how do I contact? And, and they're all demo, they're all different. So the Zam site, it normalizes that process because they know where the player is, they know where the contact information is. And so it's easier for them to navigate it. So we're just, we're using that as kind of an impetus for talent to use that as an augment to their website. Okay, so um, something coming up uh, fairly soon and uh, is a, Voice Sam, I'm calling it Voice Sam Go. It might be a lame thing because that's been used, so it might change. Uh, but what it is is a web app. Uh, sorry, a uh, a phone app. Okay. And um, I'm not going to tell you how it works, but uh, imagine that you are in your car and you get a call from a client, which I'm sure this happens, and they need something right away or they want to know something. And you're a Voice Sam member, and so what do you do? Well, you have to go home, you know, fire up the, the desktop or whatever and uh and send that to them well this is a way that instantly <laughs> emphasis on instantly you get that whatever they need because they've select they've pre-selected it for you you get that into their hands and they can hear it right away into their ears i should say so that's uh that's coming time is of the yep. essence that's for sure everybody wants yep. everything yesterday now so everything yep and this uh um this came from an idea of one of my uh clients one of our clients and it's a great idea. And I'm like, guys, devs, let's get on this. We got to get going. And so it's going to be really cool. And uh, it'll be a great little handy tool for talent to carry around their stuff and get it out there. Uh, the, the other thing I can't talk completely about, but we're coming out with a new player, a new radical player design that is read based and is going to, I think, just kind of introduce a whole new level of uh, of previewing on all the platforms that you can preview on. So I, that, that's what I'll say it for now. And uh, <laughs> Nice little tease. That's got everybody wondering now. Well, stay tuned. Stay I mean, it's going to happen. Right. And this, this happens to be my little baby because I was looking at the players out there, not just our player, but all players. And I'm like, well, now come on. There's, all right. I think I have an idea. So we're going to see if it works. It might bomb totally, but and some things have that I've thought of, but I'm hoping this will be a this will be a real help to some of the talent to keep the the voices in their buyers' ears. That's that's what I do. I love it. Well, the website is voicesam.com. You can find out all about all of the different features, and there are quite a few other features, a lot of features even that we didn't get into today. So make sure that you go to the website and check that out. Uh, you can check out pricing. That the I love the fact that you can still you can get the bass player, and then you can just kind of add whatever you need if you need anything. Uh, and hands down, no question, customer service has always been top notch, and so that's one thing that you will not have to worry about as far as getting the player set up, getting it on your website, trying to figure out how to make everything work, trying to understand all the features and stuff like that. And correct me if I'm wrong, but you have a YouTube channel, and and there's a lot of video tutorials as well, right? We do. Yeah. Yep. And so, and they're short. It's, um, it's just like, how do you do this? Well, here's how you do it. Right on. Well, Bob, this has been so great. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for the player because I, I personally love the player. I, I think that I love the idea of being able to skip through the tracks. I think that's so smart uh, that, you know, to be able to give people the option to jump ahead to the next clip really quickly, really easily. The fact that everything can be downloaded, which makes yeah. things so much easier. The way that it integrates. I love being able to have buttons on my website so they can click you know right away they can see which demos i have and click the button to load the appropriate one in the player and all of that sort of stuff there's so many great things about it so i think you've really created a a valuable and smart resource and uh from a voiceover like for a voice actor that's trying to market themselves i mean look if you're you're spending two grand or 2500 or whatever you're spending on your demo and then times mm -hmm. that by however many demos you've got spending a few bucks a month to get a really really good player to showcase them to me it seems like a no-brainer mm -hmm. well thank you 
It's been it's been a lot of fun, and it's been fun talking to you. You asked some tough questions there and put me <laughs> on the spot, but hopefully uh, I gave you the right answers and to and to my to my clients. And also, you know, I just want to say something to the voiceover community, folks. I I'm with you. You're you're all you know. Mike Mark goes by Vopreneur, and then someday I want to ask you how you came up with that. But I have a feeling, like me, you're all entrepreneurs. You yeah. know, you visualize out there in time who and what you want to be and there's a lot of barriers and uh, innovators uh, you're innovators because you're entrepreneurs but you're you're willing to take the risk to enjoy the rewards because you can visualize yourself up there um, in time in a place so keep pursuing it um, yeah. and if you ever need encouragement write me and my phone number is out there everywhere so call me or tell mark to give your give your my phone number because I love encouraging talent. It's not an easy industry you're in, and there's going to be setbacks. Yep. And those can either, um, you know, they can they can strengthen you or weaken you. Yeah. But if you keep um, focus on that on who you are out there, you're going to make it. And remember, it's a numbers game. Just stay at it. That is a good word. That is a that is a good word indeed. I think that's a good place to wrap this up. Leave that with. Uh... Something to something to let percolate for sure. It is it is a mm. numbers game, but if you reach enough people, eventually you're going to find the person that needs you because you, you know you mentioned it earlier. They're looking for a particular voice that they're hearing inside of their head, and eventually you will be that voice for someone. Exactly. Absolutely. Right well, thank you so much, Bob. Again, the website is voicesam.com, and check it out. Check out what the player has to offer, uh, and we'll be keeping an eye out for some of these new features that are coming. You got me very very intrigued now. <laughs> Thanks so much. It's been such a pleasure. I really am a big fan of the Voice Sam Player. It's what I've been using on my website for a number of years. I'm proud to be an affiliate, uh, helping talent to get connected to Bob and to Voice Sam and using this incredible resource as a way to showcase demos. I think it is the best way to do it. And I've tried a lot of different players before, and I always come back to Voice Sam. Now, you did hear me give the link, voicesam.com. I will mention if you would like to sign up for Voice Sam and receive a $25 credit on your account, which will get you about two months of free Voice Sam for the bass player, you can do that at voicesam.com slash Mark Scott, voicesam.com forward slash Mark Scott. If you're already using the player, I hope you've picked up some tips and tricks that are going to help you to get the maximum effectiveness out of it. I know that one of the things that I need to do as soon as this episode is done is get my logo added to my voice sampler because that was something that until recently I didn't even realize I could do. So hopefully you've got some advice. Hopefully you've figured out some things that you can do using using Zam links and the way that you name your tracks for SEO purposes and creating backlink potential and all sorts of great information in this. And I'm grateful to Bob for taking the time to share it with us. I really do hope that it helps you. Thanks so much for listening and I'll catch you on the next one. The Everyday Vopreneur Podcast. Available everywhere fine podcasts are given away for free. Mostly, we think. Having your voiceover demos easily playable and downloadable on your website is essential. The Voice Sam Player lets you do that across any device and browser. There are also options for adding play buttons in your email signature, tracking your listens, and even putting videos in your demo player. Sign up now at voicesam.com slash Mark Scott and receive an instant $25 credit. For full details and to claim this offer, visit voicesam.com slash Mark Scott. And scene. And that's a wrap. Thanks for hanging in. Thanks for hanging out. Want more Vopreneur goodness? Jump online at vopreneur.com.